Picking back up where I left off uh, last Friday, I believe it was. I was trying to install this thing and got sidetracked by my dump insert that showed up Friday evening. So that's what I ended up doing instead of putting this on was putting my dump insert in and so I could deliver wood over the weekend and I delivered about five loads over the weekend with it. Everything went good. I did not take my video camera for some strange unknown reason. It might have had something to do with it was just miserably cold and I just didn't want to deal with it. But uh, it was uh, it was zero this morning here, and uh, so it's, the cold still continues. It's supposed to get up to. 25 today is going to be the high. Yesterday the high was 14, uh, uh, and I, I was out in it all day yesterday. Yesterday was New Year's Day. Uh, I was cutting wood about all day yesterday. I know some of y'all been wanting to see some more wood cutting, and uh, I plan on making a video of that. I just hadn't hadn't done it yet, and uh, I just. Yesterday it was so cold, I just didn't feel like messing with it. I just wanted to get the wood cut and, and move on with life. But anyway, basically what I got left to do is I got to raise this thing up, take these stand legs off, and then I got to get this the right the height that I want it. And uh, I got to put this bolt, I got to put this bolt up here. This long bolt is going to go through here, and then these are going to be attached to the to the bolt. Um, in order to do that, I'm going to have to unhook it down here. I'm going to have to go ahead and hook these up here first with this long bolt. Then raise it up, get the height I want it, and then reconnect these down here. So... That's what I'm getting ready to do now, and then uh, we'll go from there. So I've got the mower attached to the tractor and it's pretty simple. You just connect those up there, get, get your height right. And the, the height is right when this shaft and that shaft are at the same height. They want them within two inches of each other in any direction, side to side and up and down. So I've got that done. I've got this hooked up. You tighten this one and you and you uh, screw that one out till it gets tight. That puts t uh, torsion on it to the left side. Um, you're supposed to lower that arm two inches, and I did not do that at this time. Probably not going to be using this very much right now. Just trying to get it all set up uh, so I can put the. Uh, the mower itself on the unit. We might try it out a little bit, but let's see how it works like this. It's gonna make it a whole lot more difficult to hook and unhook if you lower that arm two inches, cause uh, it just is. If you ever try to hook something up and one side's higher than the other, it just don't hook up very easy. But anyway, for now, this is how it's gonna be. The next step is gonna be, to hook the PTO up and I think I'm gonna have to cut it. So that's the next thing I'm getting ready to do. Yep, 
that is I'll tell you that's the shortest I've ever had to cut a PTO shaft there ain't a whole lot whole lot of slippage going on here but that's how what it had to be to get it hooked up now fortunately even though this is a three-point hitch implement you're not gonna be raising this up and down at all so it should always work as long as you use it on this one tractor <laughs> anyway if there's any longer distance here it ain't gonna work we probably have to buy another shaft but uh I mean, I cut it to where it will just, you can just barely get it hooked up. It'll just, uh, but anyway, that's beside the point. It's on there. It's got enough shaft in it. I'm, I'm comfortable with it. I still got to, I got to uh, take this shield and put it back over top of it. I had it off so I could get to this nut and everything, but I'll unhook it from the tractor and take that shield and put it back on there. Uh after that i get to turn the pto on and start messing with the hydraulics and see if uh see how that's going to work out and then i'm going to try to put the head on and uh we'll go from there okay everything's hooked up ready to go pto's on all the linkage wiring is hooked up from the joystick um so i'm going to get in the tractor I've got to unfold this boom so I can get it down here where I can put the head on. So this is going to be the first time this machine's ever moved right here. All right, I have no idea what's going to happen. It's either going to work or it's going to blow all to hell. Wish me luck. All right, I got to turn the PTO on to run the oil. coming in all right now when I push the uh, lever forwards the boom goes down uh, I gotta be careful not to hit the gator there and then when I pull the lever back the boom comes up so it works pretty intuitive just like I would uh, think it would in my brain so that's good now it's got a couple of knobs and I think one of them makes it swing. Okay, that's that one is the uh, boom tilt or the head tilt. So that's what that does. Now the other one, this one, I'm pretty sure is going to make this boom swing. Yeah. So the boom will swing around behind the tractor and the reason it does that is for transport you raise it all the way up and you swing it around like that and you transport the head down the road like that so that's uh that's nice and that's how far it comes around this way so all that works um all of that now is mounting the head and hooking the hydraulic hoses up and then we'll go give it a give it a test run anyway. 
after I eat lunch. Gotta go eat lunch. All right, I got the head mounted on there. I need to grease it. And the last thing I gotta do is hook the hydraulic hoses up. I got two big hoses that run the motor and then a case drain for the motor because this is a high flow motor. So I gotta do that. And then um, we'll go try it out a little bit give it a test run for a few minutes and see how it goes oh one other thing i gotta do is i gotta adjust this stop bolt you gotta run the cylinder all the way out and then adjust this bolt to where it hits the the boom and that's just supposed to keep the cylinder from overextending i guess but anyway other than that hoses and that and then i can go test it out a little bit all right so i've got the lines hooked up the instructions are not 100 percent clear on how they're supposed to be hooked up they're a little bit vague about telling whether this is pressure or this is pressure but i followed it back and i'm pretty sure this is a pressure and i'm pretty sure that's pressure on that side of the motor so that's how i've got it hooked up and i'm getting ready to turn it on for the first time and I want to let y'all watch and we'll get, find out together whether it's hooked up right or not. apparently it is hooked up correctly because it all worked and it's spinning the right direction i don't think it'll spin the opposite direction anyway but i think it's all good uh i got other something else i got to work on for a little while and then i want to go try it just a little bit on something i'll find something to work on oh i gotta adjust that that bolt i gotta do that before i head out with it but uh the only thing I'm having trouble with on it is every time you go to move a function, it wants to swing back to begin with, and then it'll work fine. And then if you stop for a few seconds, it wants to and move any function, not the swing function, but like if you want to let it down, the first thing it does is swing back and very abruptly. So I don't know what's going on with that. I don't know if there's something that needs to be adjusted on the valve. I may have to call Diamond about that and see what they say. All right, uh, we'll see y'all in a little bit out in the field somewhere, maybe. All right, so I contacted Diamond's warranty department about this little problem I'm having with the uh, hydraulic valve, and uh, they're actually, uh, I got a hold of a, a guy named Kelly, and he is really trying to help me out. He's done call, contacted, this is the, the same day I've called him now, I called him late in the evening, and he's already called me back twice with information on a couple of different things to try on this valve. So at least they're trying to help me. I can, I, I mean, most of the time <laughs> you can't get people to call you back, but uh, he's done called me back twice, and he's he's uh, he's really trying to help me out and get this thing, figure out what's going on with it, and and uh, if what he tells me tells me to try it doesn't work he said they you know they they got to send me parts or whatever they got to do they said they would take care of it so pretty pleased with that they seem to have good customer customer support which is good to know so anyway see y'all later